Well, good day. This is uh, Jerry Bowes with Polemic Pool, and we have a discussion to be had, the question being, is social media detrimental to modern political discourse? We have with us tonight Steve Anderson, Laura Casaletto, and Jeffrey Saint. I'm going to to start off tonight's topic by mentioning something that I heard today, and that is one-third of the American people receive their news prominently from their news feed on Facebook. Steve, would you like to comment on that and launch us into our discussion this evening? Well, yeah. uh, I mean, we can go in a lot of different directions. I guess my initial uh, sense is that um, the more media that we can tap into, um, I think the better. And, you know, if, if someone wants to use Facebook as their primary uh, form of news, um, that wouldn't be my recommendation. I would rather see them have a whole buffet of uh, options, i.e. TV, uh, whether it be newspaper, whether it be Internet, whether it be Facebook, a whole plethora of uh, choices. So that's kind of my instinctive answer. Uh, Laura? Um, There's always a statistic that's shocking and appalling, but I feel I'm going to not be shocked or appalled by that at all. And I think that the internet is a great thing, and I have some hopes for our future evolution as a species based on the possibility the internet holds, despite the fact that I feel that gatekeepers are, you know, at this very moment trying to get control of the internet and wrest it away from the public where it is now. Well, that, that that's a good point. Uh, would you like to add something, uh, Jeffrey? I'd like to take some things away. Go ahead. Um, first, you know, and, and going to Steve's point, the, the the, the point you made was you'd like people to have access to a lot of different sources of media. What's on Facebook is a feed from another source of media. The problem isn't the medium in which you're consuming information. The problem is, as Laura mentioned, the gatekeepers of that media itself, the ones who are truly in control of the information. I don't think it matters whether you use social media, Facebook, Pinterest, uh, MySpace, which is, you know, who, who uses MySpace anymore even remembers what it is if you're over 18 years old. Um, the point is, it's not where you consume it that's the problem. The problem is we have people who are telling us what to consume and only giving us not a buffet, but they're giving us, you know, one choice of an entree. You can get it from me on Facebook. You can get it from me on TV. You can get it from me directly on my internet. You can get it from me on my blog site. I'm all over the place. And no matter how you get me, I don't care as long as you do. And that's what I would pose is the larger problem, is the media itself, not the medium. The control of the information. Yes. That limits perspective. Because in essence, what's happening is we are being told not only when to think, but how to think, what to think, and why to think it. Well, that's nothing new, of course. What we have now are just new technologies in which this seems to be coming to the fore. And that's why it's at our at our attention, I, I would think. Um, I mean, you would have, um, like, newspaper conglomerates in the past which attempted to control the political voice of a state, for instance, in, in, in controlling state elections by dominating all the uh, pertinent newspapers in that state. Those types of dominating the information have been going on for for ages. And, and, and honestly, Jerry, you're correct. I, but, but it's not only the newspaper in a state. You don't only have the L.A. Times on the West Coast, the New York Times on the population for the Wall Street Journal and the Washington Post. Now you've taken these geographies and you've put them out globally and you've allowed somebody to own a newspaper and a TV station. And, of course, anybody can have their own websites. So we have an ever-expanding geography which is controlled by the same voice. Well, Jeffrey, you're trying to make a distinction without a difference. If you're arguing that it's not the medium 
the specific uh, methodology one uses to get the, the news, but rather the people, as you would say, the gatekeepers. The whole idea of having different uh, uh, forms of media uh, in general helps prevent the gatekeepers from from the control. Let me let me give you an example. Let's take uh, a media like TV. Now, one could argue that Fox News, as an example, and MSNBC are owned by conglomerates, and they are rich, rich people. Powerful people are in charge of those. And they probably both are protecting the rich in one way or the other. But you're not uh, suggesting that Fox News and MSNBC should be no different to the listener and, and be able to get different information from either, are you? Steve, can you... Can you ask me that question more concisely? Because I was with you and then I wasn't. Okay. I, I apologize for that. No, um, you were suggesting, I thought, and I don't want to speak for you, but uh, it's almost like um, your argument is, is regardless of the media, the rich corporate money people control it anyhow. That I agree with. Okay. That, that statement, right. I agree with. I, I'm not agreeing with you because I don't think you're making that statement, but that statement, as it stands, I do agree with that. Okay. And regardless of whether there's more types of media, i.e. newspaper, TV, radio, internet, blogs, it doesn't matter because the gatekeepers are in charge of it anyhow. And I believe is that, is that, that, is, that is the point that I made, yes. And I okay. do believe that's true. Now, where social media makes a difference, and this is the distinction with a difference, pardon the alliteration, where social media is different is that it's interactive. You have no interaction when you read a newspaper. You consume, you, there's no feedback. Yes, you can write an op-ed piece. You can write your local letter to the editor. But the fact is... A lot of the internet-based media has driven the print publications out of business. So, for example, the Grand Rapids Press is, you know, locally here for us, is a, a shadow of what it was 25 years ago when it was pretty much the only thing around for media. Same thing with the big newspapers. And the reason that is so is because of... Someone intentionally eliminating it? Well, it's it's eliminated by what's going on in the market. People are moving away from buying a static publication, like a newspaper, okay. which is one-way one way communication. You read what somebody wrote. You read the ideas of somebody else, and you can't feed back to it. Which would argue against your own argument. No, it doesn't argue against my own argument at all. The, the people that are with the ownership of the Grand Rapids Press don't have websites and TVs, but in some cases, in, in the bigger cases, because Grand Rapids Press is, is small, but in the big cases, you have shared ownership. The thing about social media that I find interesting, and if you're using it to consume a news feed from CNN or a news feed from Fox News or a news feed from NPR, and that's you, you, you may as well just go directly to their site and get it. The difference is on their site, you're limited to how much you can share back your opinion of what you've consumed. On Facebook, you can write your opinion. Sure, people jump in right away and they give their opinion on every topic uh, imaginable. Even if they are simply parroting talking points, they're still going to make those comments. So therefore what? Now, I I, I just wanted to um, ask Laura my question for Laura is you had a positive view of the Internet and its impact on our political discourse. And I was wondering if you could elaborate on that. We've heard a lot of negativism from, from, from Jeffrey. So what, what do you have to say that's positive? Jeff? Shut up, oh. Jeffrey. Oh, oh no. okay. You beat a broader point. Yes. Yes. Um, no good thing comes without bad. 
of course. Of course. course. However, so the good of the internet is I can crowdsource things. I can communicate with people all over the world, which I do. And I can I have a Pakistani friend via the internet that I can ask questions. Do you see drones? You know, and he gives me an answer. When Tahrir Square was going down, I knew someone, not personally, but I knew this woman who I could see her Facebook, I could see her live feed, I saw the media zooming in, I could spot her in the crowd and read what she was writing, and it brought me right there. And this unites people everywhere, and we get to the point, I hope, where we can understand that there is no other that we're all a human race. And I feel that this is essential now that there's 7 billion oh, I, I, of I, I, I want to ask a question because maybe we're, maybe oh, we're you're the cranky two one. different things. And, and, you know, I'm a psycholinguistic difference person. Laura, I understand what you're saying. And in the social media idea, you talk to your friend in Pakistan and say, do you see drones? And they say, absolutely. I can tell you what they look like. I can tell you what they sound like. I can tell you what they smell like. And I can tell you the fear that they instill when they're present. No doubt. Jerry, my understanding of your position on this topic was the consumption of news feed was uh, not peer-to-peer. Are you talking peer-to-peer consumption of news? In other words, I'm getting my news from going onto a social media site and reading what other people are saying about it as opposed to a direct news feed from a conglomerate. Well, here's an issue. So both. Here's an issue with the idea of going to the news feed for your news, is that that news feed can be tailor-made to a microcosm, to you individually because of what you've posted and shared before, and therefore you're not being exposed to a wider input of knowledge and information that would be useful for modern citizens. Okay, that that That's my prime. really puts a lot more meat on the bones. Mm-hmm. I okay. want to finish my point sure, um, because there is a downside but I wanted to state it, and I see the biggest downside as being our own psychology, and the Internet exploits that in, as you're pointing out, tremendous ways. They can just figure out exactly what you want and feed it to you. But that's always been the greatest challenge for people. The greatest knowledge is knowledge of self. So it's not going to be that many of us that are going to be able to go hmm, you know, this is how I'm getting my news. I need to expand this search for news. I need to do this, this, this. That's the challenge. It's always the challenge for all of us. But using uh, Jeffrey's logic uh, and paranoia, if I may, uh, you having conversing with uh, the person from Pakistan on the ground in real time, uh, is going to somehow be uh, distorted, misused, uh, propagandized uh, based on Jeffrey's logic. So regardless of what media we choose, somehow the boogeyman is going to prevent us from communicating uh, to different kinds of ideas and people. They, they will if they can get control of it. In a fluid situation, like in the Arab Spring, social media was effectively used as a rallying a mechanism for the masses to be able to communicate with one another and affect change. Exactly. And to the extent that they shut down the social media. True. Yes. That's how we get things done so much more quickly than we used to. Because there is an almost instantaneous feed available. But we're reliant upon an infrastructure. And you can call it paranoia all you want. I know you're just making fun of me, Steve, because we're, we're actually friends. But is it truly paranoid if somebody else is in control of not only how you're going to say something, but what you're going to say? Well, no, that's not paranoia. That's just the real world. And that's what's happening. And so in the Arab Spring, to prevent that kind of event from happening again, countries have shut down their internet. Do you think you have the right to go out and tweet whatever is going on if you're an Iranian dissident? In Iran? No. Do you think in North Korea that it's an open society? Do you think in China that they allow an open internet? They don't. They tightly control, even in China, sure. they tightly control the internet. And if you get caught posting something that the overseers, the gatekeepers in, in the government of China don't like, 
you can go to prison, and people have. So I've run across censorship have. on the internet, and I th- have you guys run across censorship? You mean personally? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, I've run so across So we yeah. are aware yes, that, that I mean, it is looming over us, and I think that you must assume that the internet comes through the government. But we're aware of it. It's in our face. The newspaper, you are not aware of it. You are just fed something. I, so. I brought up the international uh, uh, issue of, of the Arab Spring and how social media um, interplayed with it because I thought it would, um, would, would sh- give us a distinction between foreign situations and our own domestic. Well, is, let me just ask you, I mean, I don't know how aware any, any of you are of the TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, that, that's, that's coming. But is our domestic situation all that far removed from what we're seeing in other countries, or are we modeling and chasing right after them because the powers in our own country, in the United States of America, the greatest free democracy in the world, as they would have us believe, are threatened now to the same extent, but they're just a little bit less public in acknowledging it? Well, look, if we want to go down this Orwellian uh, well, it is a know, rat hole. Yeah, it's what it is. Uh, we can. It was prescient. Uh, and, 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 and like Laura said, I think we're conscious of it. But I still go back to the more types of media that you can be exposed to and being aware that the gatekeepers want to control that. Um, we, we have to be conscious of it, but more media, more social media, if I'm going to err, I would err on that side. I just want to clarify semantic. You're saying more media, and I'm saying and I'm saying it's the source of the media that you want more people to have access to, more sources. Not more media itself, but more sources. Actually, both. Because if you want Fox News, there's 15 ways of getting Fox News. You're not going to have anything more than a, a very homogenized yes. view, no matter how many sources of media you go to for your Fox News. But... If you're taking in Fox and NPR and and MSNBC and others, those are different sources that will give you very disparate ideas of what's going on. And that's what you're talking about, isn't it, Steve? Really, I'm talking about both. Are we not making a podcast? So are we not arguing against your whole premise, Jerry? Well, to me, it's not so much a premise as it is an issue that I'm concerned about and rather frightened about, too. I mean, I'm, I'm with Steve. I think that we should try and get as many sources of information possible. And I, I know I, I, yes, I go to my news feed. I also um, still subscribe to some print uh, sources. I listen to the radio, various, various uh, uh, yes. avenues there, as well as a wide variety of, of, of television. Absolutely. So I think I, I've got a number of endpoints, probably more than a lot of people, and because I'm just that kind of guy. Right. Um, All of us. We, we, we all here. That's, that's why we're here. That's why we're here. But uh, for a, a goodly number of people in our political situation here in our divided country politically, so many people do not receive that plethora of input and are following, as Jeffrey has pointed out, certain lines of information that are presented to them, which they take in themselves. No, no and repeat. argument. So as we move it, we, we, we just had a straw poll for the GOP, okay, and, you know, uh, Rand Paul won. Well, basically what I think I hear you say, Jerry, is Republicans are going to listen to Republican feeds and Democrats are going to listen to Democratic feeds. The two have very little crossover. There's very little crosstalk between them. In fact, it's to the point where even in the debates, they're not debates. They're all saying the same thing. They're using a slightly different word to describe it, but... It basically, it's the hey, same Jeffrey, thing. It's the 21st century. American citizens don't believe in those two parties anymore. Um, that's that's actually, what polls say. That's news to me. That's what polls say. Well, they, they're not doing anything about it. They don't. They don't. Well, those those I, are our I, options. I, I don't think I, I, I'm confused when you say Paul is saying people don't believe in the two parties anymore. No, they don't. When really? Yeah, when they're asked, they're like, nah, I don't care about either one. The, the, well, the all you have to do is, li- if you do believe polls, 
and you don't think the gatekeepers are controlling those, you have to know that the Congress uh, approval rating is somewhere in the teens. If it's that high. If it's that high. Yeah, it was out in high. single digits earlier, uh, uh, late uh, last year, actually. Uh, the uh, uh, Supreme Court, uh, who used to have kind of a stellar uh, uh, kind of a reputation, is actually uh, pulling uh, way below uh, in the 40s. Uh, President Obama took a, a big hit uh, ever since the uh, the uh, bringing out of the um, website for the health care. Uh, he took a big hit. If you look at our two parties, I can't imagine anybody that would subscribe to either one. I want to without... pound on the table because I want to like jump right on your bandwagon, but Jeffrey won't let me pound on the table because of the microphone. But but yes, there you go. You see, the internet can bring whole new questions that have never been allowed to be asked and radically change the whole realm of what is possible. That's what I think is exciting about it and necessary. So is our senator from Vermont going to run as a third party? Ugh. Do we have to go back? You oh, you went right back into the main party. Oh, I did. Although Bernie did. Sanders. But, he's, Bernie. but it's an alternative. Yeah. yeah. I'm there's, just, I'm there's just curious. Difference. There are lots of alternatives. But right now, in the United States, we're a two-party government. There's a couple of independents here and there, but largely we're a two-party government. Now, maybe the Internet will lead us away from that. That could be a hope for the Internet. Maybe it'll lead us away from capitalism. Maybe mm. dangerous ideas will surface. I like the idea that it is possible for dangerous ideas to get their opportunity. Like the Tea Party. Now, there is a dangerous I idea. have never... Well, you can't, you can't have it both ways. You, that, that's correct, no, Steve. hold on. Let me say... I have always been, to in a certain degree, pro-Tea Party because I see them as citizens who are active and involved and trying to contribute to their government. I that's agree. not being pro-Tea Party. That's being pro- Pro-democratic. Methodology. Pro-democratic. Yeah. Yes. That's absolutely right. Yeah, so I never so. want to just go slam-slam on Tea Party people. I want to go, good, you guys, go get some information and get together and educate each other and we had uh, then an opposing movement sort of on the other side and i was what was the opposing movement occupy occupy yes. Occupy. And, and so when people when citizens took an active role and interest in government that was great to me on both sides i was happy to see all of that and i would agree that what the tea party represented from getting a message out and being very disruptive that's the kind of uh, movement, that's the kind of methodology, that's the kind of idea that's destructive and that's going to change the way we think about things. And I can support doing that, but that's a different statement than saying I support the Tea Party. Oh, it is. Quite, quite. Yeah, so I'm just, quite, you know, so. Laura, you really don't support the Tea Party. You support what they were trying to do, which is just simply disrupt the status quo. Is that correct? Or, or are you a Tea Party or and I didn't know it? <laughs> <laughs> I support citizens who want to become actively involved in their government yes. who want to yeah. dig deeper into what is going on who want to challenge the reigning paradigm and the, okay and, and i think that's great and social media certainly plays a huge role in that right i mean well, could, well, it, would they have been able to do it without social media <laughs> would they have been as effective as quickly i mean they came up in 2009 and it's only 2014 and they're already They've, they've had their rise, they've had their reign, and they've had their fall. I mean, my God, we, we talk about the cosmological calendar and how we are in the last second of that cosmological year. The Tea Party's not even a blip on that screen. And the and money, the moneyed interests certainly held their own against it, uh, against that wave of, they did. of so popularism. My, my point is, is, that, is, that a, is that a positive thing that came out of the use of social media that way? I, I agree with Laura that I think it is. Well, I, you know, there are going to be movements on social media that I'm not going to agree with, but I think it's great that there's a means for people to communicate Absolutely. and support one another in, in, in their issue-oriented campaigns. I'm not going to agree with all of them, but I think it's there, and it's, it's there for people to figure out how to use to effect change in, in whatever positive fashion okay. they think. Yeah, and, and 
we can't lower. I mean, we we can base everything on lowest common denominator, and maybe the average Joe Blow out there is not going to be conscious of um, other options other than the two-party system that you and I agree have a stranglehold on our system. But that doesn't mean that um, there aren't uh, opportunities for either the Tea Party or a more liberal bent uh, to to make some changes, like a Bernie Sanders. So, you know, I I, I just would hate to become so cynical that that the two party system has such control that we have no uh, other options. You're not saying that, are Absolutely you? Absolutely not. Okay. What I'm saying, right. what what I'm saying, and let me be clear, is that I believe social media, for all of its faults, and there are many, social media has the ability, if used as a tool, to kind of be a level playing field for everybody using it, at the level of peer to peer. The problem is when you bring money into it. Yes. The, the, the problem wasn't sure. with the grassroots of the Tea Party. The problem was with the effing Koch brothers and that whole right. over-corporatized one-tenth of one percent that hijacked the Tea Party, and they didn't realize they were being hijacked and until I, they if, were. If you hadn't brought that up, that's what I was going to do next time coming around to me because I, I, I that was the demise, I thought, of that entire movement was their co-option by moneyed interests. So your complaint about the Tea Party is your same complaint as that of the political parties and every other system like that. Money has a way of ruining things. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I thought uh, I thought money uh, uh, tantamount to free speech. It didn't... Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, you, that, you signed on board with Citizens United, eh? <laughs> 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 yeah, well, I mean, that's what our... Uh, Listen, our, the, robed, the, 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 Steve, our robed the, leaders, uh, our, our robed robed told leaders us. are, are the, the cult of the robe. So our, our money, money out of politics us. could be one of the cures to what we're talking about. So if you can afford it, speech is free. Well, pretty soon you'll be able to buy freedom directly, and that will be even better. Can you imagine that? Um, I don't think we have to imagine that. There's a lot of cases in history for uh, the purchase out of indenturement. Well, we could say, hmm, uh... Stephen, we're going to cut you off internet access unless you can buy. Be careful! Your way the in. Uh, the court case that just came down in favor of Comcast being able to limit bandwidth to their own corporate customers did exactly that. And now, as a result of it, Netflix had to renegotiate a deal because yes. Comcast said, "In prime time, you're consuming so much bandwidth, we don't like it, and we can charge you more because you're that popular." And Netflix is trying hard not to raise their current yes. subscription rates, but Laura, that's exactly what just happened. And so, you know, it, it's an interesting discussion. We have a minute and a half left, so you know, I'm going to throw it back to Jerry if you guys don't mind. And, and, and Jerry, sum up what we've talked about if, if we've been on your topic and what you think. Uh, but, but keep in mind, you still need time to talk about your subject, which we're going to talk two weeks from today. If we, if we get, yeah, yeah, sure enough, sure enough, a minute and a half. Well, I just, I, I just appreciated everyone. So uh, I, I think we've. We've we've talked a, a great range of topics within our, our, our question, and I and I loved it. And I, I don't really think I can sum it up because we've touched on so many points. Exactly. But but I, I certainly uh, love this this discussion tonight, and I look forward to our next one, which will be uh, hosted by our own Jeffrey Saint. What do you have in mind for our next polemic pool? The next polemic pool, uh, which we're going to record in a couple of weeks, I, I was thinking about human rights and j just the idea that the term human rights is an oxymoron. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we have this inculcated philosophy that we're born into the world as human beings and we all have inalienable equal rights, and in fact, we don't. I'd like to discuss that in a little more depth in the deep end of the polemic pool in a couple of weeks because uh, it seems to me like you're born and the so-called rights that you have are privileges given to you by a few who seem to have the power to give those rights to you. Well, that Wonderful. sounds like a fine philosophical discussion. Uh, I want I to thank everyone to for contributing. Yeah. Thank you. This, the, thank you all. Yeah. Goodbye, everyone. And remember, Bye. try to avoid addiction. The Internet will hook you. 
try to know thyself. Love you guys. See you next time in the polemic, polemic pool. pool. Take a dip.